Hey guys, before we get into the video, I want to do a little disclaimer. The majority of this video is based on information directly from RPI, RPI statistics, my own experiences at RPI between fall 2016 and spring 2020, and other student testimonies. Additionally, while the title of this video is Don't Go to RPI, I do include good things about the school and things I personally liked about it. Please watch the entire video for a better picture and to make an informed decision about attending RPI. Finally, please also do your own research about the school and do not take my words as gospel. Thanks! Hi everyone, my name is Sunny and welcome back to another real life related video. Today I'm going to be talking about a question that a lot of students from my school get and that question is should I go to RPI? I actually graduated from RPI or Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute in December of 2019 so I wanted to make a video that was part describing my experience as an undergraduate and part trying to help out prospective students on deciding on whether or not they want to go to RPI. I am not all known but I strongly suggest that prospective students watch this video and any other videos they may find about RPI all the way through to make an informed decision about choosing to go to RPI. I've also included some feedback from other RPI students who took a survey that I did and I also have access to a in-person RPI student. Uh, I'm currently living with them so don't worry about quarantine and things like that but uh, their comments will all be at the end of this video and if you end up enjoying this video, it would really help me out if you could like this video and possibly subscribe to my channel. And as always, if you have questions that I did not answer in this video, please feel free to leave a comment. I like getting comments and I love helping people out. As you can see from this video's timeline, this video is very long and I have tried to go in depth on a bunch of topics that may be relevant to a prospective student. These topics include things like academics, extracurriculars, mental health services, summer arch, the school's administration, cost of attendance, and testimonies from other students. I've provided timestamps down in the description of this video, so you can go to one and click on it and just skip to that part of the video if that's all you want to watch. I've also made a few other videos about RPI on my channel in the past, and I have a playlist for those videos. A link to that will also be in the description, or you can find it on my channel page. I've provided other links in the description to sites that you may find helpful as a prospective student. These include links to RPI's course catalog, a website with images of student dorms, and resources regarding Greek life. So I can't start blabbering about RPI until I tell you who I am, so I will start off this video by introducing myself. Hi, my name is Sunny, like I said, and I graduated from RPI in December of 2019 with a bachelor's in biology, and I also got a minor in general psychology. My graduating GPA was 3.61 and I graduated with cum laude honors, which is pretty cool. I was originally majoring in bioinformatics and molecular biology, but due to difficulties with certain computer programming courses, I changed my major to biology. That was a really good decision for me as it really helped my mental health and it let me keep my GPA up so high so I'm pretty grateful that I did that. And I'm actually still attending RPI as a co-terminal master's student. This means that I'm taking one extra year to get a master's along with my bachelor's degree and my master's will also be in biology. If everything goes well, especially given the current circumstances, I will receive my master's in biology by the end of December of this year and in total I will have attended RPI for a total of 4.5 years and gotten my bachelor's and my master's. I tend to be academics focused and not super interested in extracurriculars. The one exception to that would be RPI's equestrian team, of which I was a member for my entire time at RPI. Other than that, I was not really involved in anything besides another club for creative writing that I just joined during my senior year. I also never had any interest in joining Greek life, and while this video does contain some Greek life information, Information, I do not have any real personal experiences with RPI Greek life. So with my little introduction out of the way, I will now get on to the meat of the video and trust me there's a lot of it. The first topic I'll be getting into are RPI's academics. RPI's academics were rated 7.5 out of 10 on average from my student survey. RPI is a comparatively small school and it's definitely STEM focused, so its range of degrees it offers is definitely pretty limited in some aspects. Most of the degrees offered at RPI are science or engineering in nature. A few are based on information technology and architecture. If you are not a STEM oriented person and would be happier pursuing a degree in the arts or humanities, RPI is likely not a good fit for you. 
There are a wider variety of minors to choose from though, including astrobiology, history, creative writing, and marketing, so a wider variety of topics could be explored as a complement to a STEM degree at RPI. Minors don't realistically get you anything in the real world though, so it may not be worth it to you. The degree requirements at RPI can be pretty rigorous, and if a student takes too many lighter semesters at RPI for whatever reason, there's a higher chance that they're going to have to spend like extra years at RPI, which means spending more money. Thus, I cannot stress enough the importance of transfer credits as an incoming student. These include credits RPI may grant you for AP or IB exams, or community college credits you may have taken as a high schooler. RPI just a few months ago actually changed how they accept AP and IB credits. They used to accept 4s and 5s for AP and 5s, 6s, and 7s for IB higher level exams. But now they actually only accept fives for AP exams and six and sevens for IB higher level exams. You can bring in a total of 32 transfer credits, but only 20 of them, which is five classes worth, can be from AP or IB. This is a move that angered some prospective RPI students, and I'll talk more about the administration's decision later. But this is really important to know, and pretty much the administration just wants students to spend more time at RPI giving them money for classes taken at RPI. So I cannot recommend RPI at all unless you are bringing in at least 16 to 20 transfer credits, which is about a semester's worth of classes. Now, RPI education is expensive, and if you want to go there, I recommend lowering the cost in any way possible. In this case, getting credits out of the way during high school and getting good grades on the AP and IB exams. Another method for this that I highly, highly, highly recommend you do if you really want to go to RPI and don't have many transfer credits is to attend a community college first for two years, then transfer into RPI as a junior. This will save you so much money and likely stress, and you will get a pretty good degree from RPI in the end anyway. In the academic aspect, I cannot recommend RPI to anyone unless you have a lot of transfer credits or will be attending community college first. Classes in general are rigorous at RPI, though some more than others. I've had classes where basically everyone gets an A, and I've had classes where I barely scraped by with a C or C+. There are definitely more difficult than those at many other universities. And it's not impossible to get good grades, you will just have to work very hard and acknowledge that you will probably not have a lot of free time in your life. I would say you spend more time studying and doing homework in your first two years at RPI compared to the last two, but that may be different for majors like architecture or engineering that have senior design projects and the like. To wrap up this section, I will briefly describe my academic experience as an undergrad at RPI. I personally really enjoyed my academic career overall, especially after getting prerequisite courses out of the way. For example, I really hated some of my prereqs that I was forced to take, like physics or computer science, but since biology is what I really love and enjoy, once I was taking upper level biology courses essentially 100% of the time, I loved my academic experience. I came in with 28 transfer credits and 32 after I took uh, physics 2 over the summer at a community college, and that helped me immensely. It's why I graduated early and it helped save me tons of money, and I definitely would not have gone to RPI if I did not come in with so many transfer credits. I cannot speak for every department at RPI, but the professors in the biology department are great all around. Every school will have a few bad apples or people who should definitely not be qualified to teach, but overall I have no major complaints about the professors that I've had. I actually love several of the professors I've had. They were great and friendly and smart and helpful, and I will totally miss them after I leave RPI for good. Overall, I feel like I earned a really good bachelor's degree, and that definitely prepared me to pursue my master's, and I feel more and more confident in my future. I learned a lot in my classes, and personally, I believe I got a high quality education. Based on academics alone, would I recommend RPI to others? I say yes, if you can handle how rigorous it will get. The education is high quality, Quality, but you have to be willing to put in the work.
So I forgot to ask about this on my survey, which is annoying, but next I'm going to be talking about research at RPI. RPI is a research-focused university, and they get over $100 million to perform research each year. RPI also heavily encourages undergraduate students to be involved in research, and I support this. Research is both super important and super interesting to do in a field that you're interested in. Undergraduate students may get credit for research they do, or in some instances, you can actually get paid like with a paycheck. You can also do research just for the sake of doing it and not get anything in return pretty much. An important suggestion I have for prospective students is if you attend RPI you probably shouldn't worry about getting research as a freshman and this can apply to other colleges as well. I say this for several reasons. First, compared to upperclassmen you likely lack the knowledge and experience and will be less likely to get approved to join a research lab in general. Second, since research should be done with a professor you know relatively well well. As a freshman, it is unlikely you will establish close relationships with many professors that quickly. Third, many positions are already occupied, especially in more popular labs by upperclassmen. Fourth and finally, and probably most importantly, many freshmen just need to get used to college life. In your freshman year, students should be focusing on academics and keeping your GPA up and getting used to RPI instead of having to worry about research. After freshman year, however, I highly recommend getting involved in research. It is a great way to apply what you learn in your courses and to open up opportunities in the future, especially if you want to go to graduate school one day. There are tons of labs undergrads can work in at RPI and it's often a more interesting way to get credits done with than just taking normal classes all the time. If you do research at RPI, you may also get to present your project at a symposium or even go to a conference, which are great for experience and your resume. Based on research opportunities alone, would I recommend RPI to others? I say yes. The number of research opportunities here is great and doing research at RPI has certainly opened doors for me in more ways than one. I'm super satisfied with the research I've done at RPI in the past and I'm pretty excited to do research in the future for my master's degree. Next up are sports, organizations, clubs, and Greek life, which were rated an average of 8.2 out of 10 on my student survey. If you're the type of person who loves American college sport culture and wants that from your school, RPI does not have that to give you. We do have sports like football, hockey, and soccer, but attendance to these games is usually mediocre at best. Hockey is our most popular sport and it's really fun to watch, and sometimes the arena does get pretty full, but at a school full of nerds, you can imagine that sports are usually not a priority for the student body. The RPI sports scene is about as opposite as you can get from the sports scene at a large school that has a lot of sports like the University of Texas, University of Alabama, or Stanford. If you're more into playing sports, I have heard that RPI has some really good teams. I don't know a lot about playing sports at RPI, but I have heard pretty much only good things. Sports are a great source of exercise and a good distraction from schoolwork, and I've also heard that teams tend to be pretty close-knit and people have much better luck making friends if they play on a sports team than if they don't. RPI also has over 200 clubs and organizations including Greek houses and I'll touch more on Greek life in a minute. These clubs and organizations serve many purposes from sports to public service to religion to student government to hobbies and beyond. I would say the selection of clubs and organizations is really good and it is likely to have at least at the very least, one or two things that could interest like any student who goes to RPI. However, due to how much schoolwork students usually have and their tendency towards introversion, some groups have low participation and it might be awkward to kind of start joining a group like that. But in general, if having good options for clubs and organizations is important to you, RPI definitely checks off those boxes. Regarding Greek life, let me reiterate that I've never been associated with it at RPI, so I recommend talking to other students who have but as for the facts, from the Inter-Fraternity Council website, RPI has 27 fraternities, 5 sororities, and 1 co-ed group. Approximately one-third of RPI students will be involved with Greek life, and I have heard that Greek life is really great for some people as it helps them create connections and relationships, get job opportunities, and is fulfilling in general. Joining a Greek house and living in it can also help cut down on living costs compared to living in on-campus housing. In general, I've heard many students say their decision to join Greek life at RPI was a great decision. Based on sports and organizations alone, would I recommend RPI to others? I say yeah. 
I have been involved with the RPI equestrian team and, and a creative writing club and those experiences have been very fulfilling to me. I've gotten to do things and meet people that I wouldn't have otherwise. RPI's large selection of organizations covers so many interests that I think every student who comes to RPI can find a place somewhere. Next, I'm going to talk about student life and college living at RPI, which was rated 7.5 out of 10 on my student survey. And I'm just going to start this section right off by saying that student life at RPI is mediocre at best, but it really does depend on who you are as a person. If you're an extreme introvert who is fine with just going to class, then going back to your room and just staying in your room all day, RPI is probably a pretty good fit for you. Otherwise, RPI does not really provide what most view as college life or the college experience so for one, I've heard many people say that the social nightlife at RPI is poor or almost non-existent. There are not many parties overall, and I've heard that any parties that do happen are usually pretty, like, not great. And there are not many nightlife options in downtown Troy either. Additionally, campus is now essentially an alcohol-free campus. RPI prohibits the possession and consumption of alcohol in any residential facilities that houses undergrads, even if a student there is 21 or older. And this also applies to any affiliated residential houses, including Greek houses. This all mostly didn't really apply to me as a student personally because I don't drink and I rarely go out to parties or anything like that, but I know it has impacted the college experience for many other students. If you are a prospective student who enjoys drinking and or partying, I recommend you keep this policy in mind and RPI might not be a good fit for you if these things are super important to you. As for RPI's dorms and housing situation, it's pretty mediocre overall but there are a few good options and while I will talk about costs later on as well, I want you to know that they're definitely overpriced. If you go to RPI, which forces both freshmen and sophomores to live on campus, except sophomores in Greek houses, I highly recommend you get into off-campus housing as soon as you can. Not all of the photos you're seeing on screen right now are mine or rooms specifically that I lived in, and a couple of these places have been renovated a bit, but they still give a good idea of what a place looks like and the kind of space they are and what furniture you will get. The freshman living option are really limited to some very basic college dorms, but I do think the ones available to upperclassmen are better, but of course they're also more expensive. As for the dining halls at RPI, I give like one and a half big thumbs down. There are a couple places like Blitman Dining Hall and Commons Dining Hall up on Freshman Hill just got renovated, but looks don't matter so much when the food is just overwhelmingly like meh. RPI's food uh, is mostly done by Sodexo like a lot of other colleges and it's fine enough like you won't get poisoned, you won't starve to death and things like that, but the options are often limited and repetitive and it's sometimes hard to maintain a healthy eating style at RPI. The food is nothing to write home about and the meal plan prices are questionable and I would say the food here has gotten better in recent years and it gets the job done, but most students are thoroughly unimpressed by what this school offers. Life at RPI can get dangerously lonely if you let it get that way. For example, one semester I went over two months without any physical human contact, no hugs, handshakes, nothing. It was a strange period for me where I basically had no one to hang out with and it took a huge hit to my mental health and all I did was go to class, ride horses, and spend time alone in my apartment. RPI students are also not the most social kids in the world and we pretty much are all nerds on some level and somewhat introverted as well. Work can take up so much time that many students have little to no social life at RPI. Based on student life and college living at RPI alone, would I recommend RPI to others? I say mm -mm, no. Facilities, dorms, and food are decent but way overpriced for what you get. And the social scene can be very lonely, oftentimes leaving students feeling down and stressed. There is also a lack of cohesion, of school and community pride at RPI, making at least my time at RPI somewhat feel very like impersonal and oftentimes lonely. Next up is the student body at RPI, which was rated on average 8.5 out of 10 from my student survey. Even though at times I felt lonely at RPI, I still think that the student body and the individuals who make up that student body are great in general. Some people have said that RPI students are super competitive and that makes them rude. I never really encounter that 
during my time at RPI at all. From what I have experienced, students are mostly nice and friendly, especially once they come out of their shells of introversion. The student body is diverse in terms of where they live and race and ethnicity, which I know can be an important consideration for some prospective college students. However, RPI is also famous for its lack of gender diversity. The current estimated gender ratio is about 68% male and 32% female, though I have heard that that ratio is slowly closing each year. I certainly have noticed this divide in my classes over the years, where in some it was hard to find more than a few women. The gender diversity appears more balanced in some majors though, like my major which was biology, where in upper level courses the ratio was more 50-50 or even sometimes classes were dominated by women. As a result of the gender ratio, I'm sad to say that occurrences of sexism on campus are certainly not unheard of. I personally only experienced a couple instances of minor sexism during my time at RPI, but I have heard accounts of more major occurrences of sexism from other female students I know as well. Any group of people may be good overall, but it will have the so-called bad apples, and not every student at RPI is nice and friendly either. For example, one boyfriend I had who I met at RPI was manipulative and emotionally abusive, so that's not great, and sometimes you hear roommate horror stories. And I would say RPI is just like any other university where you have a lot of great people and some not so good ones. So based on the RPI student body alone, would I recommend RPI to others? I say yeah. You will likely encounter issues with people that would happen at any other school and that doesn't excuse those things happening, but it's usually just a fact of life that some people suck. I forgot to put this part on my survey, which was super annoying, but now I'm going to start talking about the physical and mental health services RPI has for students. RPI has a health clinic that any student is welcome to make appointments for and use, and they're equipped to handle a variety of conditions, including gynecological topics. I have been in there several times with kind of mixed, but not bad results. For example, one time I was having prolonged eye issues and the prescription they gave me didn't really help more than like something I could just buy off the shelf, but another time I needed antibiotics and the ones they prescribed me were like super great, they worked immediately, it was great. And every student's experience with really anything is different, so I wanted to include these Google reviews of the health center since it wasn't on my survey. It has a very average rating of 2.6 out of 5 stars, and you can see for some people it is very helpful, but for others not so much. Mental health services are also really important to RPI students. College can be extraordinarily stressful on its own and many people also have other things going on in their lives. Any student can call to make an appointment at the counseling center but usually their schedule is like super packed so it often is like pretty difficult to make a first time appointment especially within like one to two weeks of when you call. The first time I went like I had to get an appointment two weeks out because they were just booked for like two weeks. It's easier to see a counselor once you start going more consistently though and recently RPI has started having drop-in counseling hours where you don't need to make an appointment. A big recurring issue that students have with the mental health center at RPI is that it's not very helpful. I'll talk about my personal experience shortly but every year at RPI I hear students talk about how counselors are not very effective or helpful especially with serious situations. They're not well equipped to deal with serious mental disorders and if a student tells a counselor that they are or even have been suicidal in the past, a counselor may fight to make you take a leave of absence from school. And many students find this harmful as school may actually be a safe haven for them. For smaller issues, however, such as stress, mild anxiety, mild traumas, or just things that happen in everyday life, I would say the counseling center is pretty effective. I went to the counseling center my freshman year when I had difficult classes and I started going again in my senior year after a stressful summer and I even still get counseling sessions now over the phone um, as a graduate student. Personally, my issues are with very mild anxiety and depression that get worse with loneliness and life stressors, but going to counseling at RPI for these issues has helped me a lot. So based on physical and mental health facilities alone, would I recommend RPI to others? I say it's a 50-50 shot. If you will likely use the physical and or mental health centers more than the average student, RPI probably doesn't have the best resources to help you out in the long term. But if you're 
you're super healthy both physically and mentally and won't need these resources very much, you probably won't encounter many issues with RPI's services. So now we're getting into the pretty juicy stuff. So just a warning, this meat is getting pretty juicy and the tea is pretty hot. So if you're a prospective RPI student, chances are high that you will have to participate in the mandatory summer arch program. This program requires students to remain on campus and take classes in the summer between their sophomore and junior years. Then in your junior year, you will theoretically get an off-campus opportunity like an internship or a co-op in either the fall or spring. So you will be on campus for at least three semesters in a row, four in some cases. Now, some schools have similar programs that work pretty well, but RPI's summer arch program is just embarrassing, honestly. And on the screen, I'll be showing some results from a student survey from the first year that Summer Arch was required. And feel free to pause and read them for yourself or I will link to the survey results in the description. This survey found that 78% of students were unsatisfied with the program and 64% would not participate if it were optional. Additionally, many open-ended questions on the original survey received, quote, vulgar responses, implying that many students were angry about Arch. What's more concerning is that people involved in the survey had to hide these open-ended responses because they didn't want students to face administrative retaliation based on their opinions. Is that like, does that sound like the kind of school you want to go to? And in the first year, Arch was made mandatory, which was last year. Less than half of students got an internship for their away semester, even though the purpose of Arch is to help students get more internships and co-ops. Over one third of students had a so-called self-designed experience, which is a fancy administrative wording for these students were at home probably not doing anything. While 95% of students passed all their summer courses, these students were described as resilient, which is a nice compliment, but it implies that the summer semester was almost unfairly difficult. Classes during summer arch are condensed into 12 or 6 week courses, while in the fall or summer classes go for about 14 to 15 weeks. This means that courses are sped up and for many students they're not able to handle this accelerated timeline. Additionally, the course offerings during the summer arch are much more restricted than in the fall or spring, which messes up the schedules of many students. Furthermore, even though juniors are allowed to live in off-campus housing, students during the arch, who are now juniors, are forced to live in and pay for on-campus housing during their summer semester. Please watch my section on the school's administration for more relevant information on why this rule exists. There are a lot of comments directly from students about Summer Arch on RPI's subreddit page, so I suggest you go check those out, but be warned that the subreddit is not exactly unbiased, and most students only post on there when they're angry, but I find it a good way to find out about the campus issues I might not hear about otherwise. Based on the Summer Arch program, would I recommend RPI to others? You might want to turn your volume down for this one. HELL NO! Like, oh my god, Summer Arch is a horribly implemented program with abysmal success rates, almost no support from students, and it's obviously a cash grab by the administration. Since pretty much all students are now required to do it, I cannot emphasize enough that it sucks, and based on previous statistics, you will probably have a bad time if you do it. And this brings us to a super important topic that I think not enough prospective students think about, which is the school's administration, which, by the way, received a whopping satisfaction rating of 3.3 out of 10 on my survey. I am admittedly not eloquent in discussing the issues with the administration, so a lot of what I say is taken from a great organization called Renew Rensselaer. Their mission is to, quote, improve the governance, leadership, financial condition, and overall transparency of RPI while aligning its core constituencies, alumni, trustees, administration, faculty, staff, and students toward the singular purpose of reestablishing its excellence in technological education. And a link to their website, which is super helpful, is in the description. So if you hear me say, or if you read on a picture I put on the screen, the term the Rensselaer plan in this section, that refers to a program started in the year 2000 meant to start a renaissance at RPI and be 
be a roadmap for improvement and change. So yield of accepted students at RPI has declined to about 20% from 30% in the year 2001, which is implying that RPI is now a second or third choice by many college applicants. Additionally, the student to faculty ratio at RPI has changed little since 1998 and currently sits at about 14 to one when considering full-time undergraduate students only. Compare this number to RPI's peer schools such as Cornell, Carnegie Mellon, and MIT who all have a student to faculty ratio less than 10 to one. RPI's ranking are also falling significantly. US News and World Report ranked RPI 39th in, in the United States in 2017, but 50th in 2020. Wall Street Journal ranked RPI 77th in 2016, but 122nd in 2020. Additionally, in 1999, RPI's undergrad engineering program was ranked in the top 25 in the United States, but by 2020, it is now ranked 30th. Many students come to RPI to be engineers, yet this has still happened. RPI's quality of research also appears to be in decline. In 2016, RPI was demoted from an R1 to an R2 school, signifying a decrease from very high research activity to just high research activity. Many other New York schools have remained R1 schools, such as Columbia, Cornell, SUNY Albany, and Rochester. Furthermore, RPI's research expenditures are now more than its revenue, which has caused large funding gaps in the past few years. RPI has also had a lot of issues with liabilities and debt in the last few years. Total liabilities have risen 378% since 2000 to 973 million dollars, while assets currently at 1.51 billion dollars has only risen 31%. RPI's total debt has also risen from 115.5 million dollars in 2000 to 742.5 million dollars in 2018. Despite this, the administration has spent a lot on rather unnecessary projects such as a new building called MPAC. MPAC was finished in 2008 with a final price tag of 221 million dollars and the original cost was estimated to be only 50 million dollars. Much of the increase in cost was due to problems caused by the build site which was a steep hill made pretty much just out of clay causing the foundation when they were building it to slide down the hill and I'm just wondering like how could that have happened at a school for engineers? Like, it still baffles me. The administration is constantly asking for donations from alumni and gifts from outside donors. However, the amount of donations has been declining. In 2000, about 17% of alumni donated to RPI, but by 2017, that amount had decreased to 7.5%. Outside donations have also slightly declined or stagnated as well for a variety of reasons, including high staff turnover, the cost of impact, a 2006 vote of no confidence, and the controversies surrounding the administration in recent years. One such controversy was the admin's restructuring of the student union. The student union was actually run and managed by students for over 127 years, and in 2016, the admin silently added a new position overseeing the union, but after protests from over a thousand people, they got rid of the position. Then in 2017, the admin stated that the school's president's powers superseded the union constitution and attempts to control the union resumed. There was another protest which I actually went to and over 5,500 supporters signed a petition to oppose administrative control of the union. However, by now the student union is no longer a student run union, which I think is beautifully illustrated by these two images right here. They literally took off the word student from the signs on our student union. Like, it's so horrible. <laughs> there was a faculty senate vote of no confidence on the school's current president in 2016, which nearly passed, but a week later, a letter was sent to faculty that told them, in nicer wording than what I'm about to say, that the faculty better support the president or make alternate career plans. Shortly afterwards, the admin just got rid of the faculty senate just for voicing their opinions about the running of the institute. And what kind of governance does that sound like to you? There is now a kind of culture of fear that many students talk about and experience at RPI. The admin may threaten or intimidate those who speak out against their actions, and some students and alumni have been concerned about being cyber-stalked by RPI staff on social media. Posters critical of the administration are selectively removed from campus even if they follow poster guidelines, and students who engage in peaceful protests may have judicial action taken against them. At the protest I went to in 2017, RPI requested that
that police film the protest and then give that footage to the administration. RPI's admin has also been criticized by civil liberty organizations like FIRE and the NYCLU. Students at RPI are often frustrated by the administration's lack of transparency. RPI makes it pretty difficult to access their reports and financial statements, and information relayed to students by the administration, especially regarding financial things, is often vague. Regarding the Summer Arch, the admin will never in a million years admit it to you, but it was conceived pretty much purely to generate more money for a school in debt. By forcing juniors to live on campus for a semester, these students must pay for housing, which generates more money for the school. Students cannot even live in their Greek houses over the summer. Additionally, many students have expressed frustration over their applications for exemption from the summer semester being denied, even if they got a summer opportunity. This does not happen to all students who get a summer opportunity though. I mentioned before that the yield of students is falling. At the same time, however, enrollment of undergraduates has actually increase. This is happening because the school needs more money, so they're trying to get as many new students as possible. Freshman class sizes increase every year, yet the amount of housing has not increased. The admin wants as many students doing an away semester as part of Summer Arch as possible because that opens up more housing for other students. Additionally, when I mentioned the AP and IB transfer credits earlier in this video, I think it's pretty safe to say that this decision was made so people bring in less transfer credits credits, thus having to spend more time and money on classes directly at RPI. Like many other large businesses, RPI doesn't want to catch bad PR if it can avoid it, and this spills into the school's handling of Title IX issues. Title IX is a law protecting people from discrimination based on sex in education programs receiving federal financial assistance. Most often, in a college setting, it is meant to protect victims of sexual assault and harassment, but in reality, at RPI, there is minimal protecting going on. Personally, I have had no experience with RPI's Title IX dealings, but if you do research, there are several articles and reports describing unsatisfactory handling of Title IX cases at RPI. I will finish up this section by talking about how the administration is handling the current pandemic situation and moving classes online. Students in my survey give the admin's handling of the situation an average 4 out of 10 rating. One of the most notable things to come out of this situation is that our school's president, who is the highest paid university president in the United States took an extraordinarily noble pay cut of 5% during this time. 5%. As you can tell from the figures on the screen, which are talking about her yearly income, if you take the $7 million figure, 5% is only just over $350,000 that she would lose per year if her pay cut even lasted a full year. If you take the almost $6 million figure, that's less than $300,000. Many CEOs and other university presidents are taking between 10 and 100% self-imposed pay cuts during this time. Who thought that announcing a whopping 5% pay cut would make anyone at RPI happy. I've seen lots of students say that not announcing it would have just been better because announcing it just angered the students so much. By the way, RPI just furloughed about 300 staff, and I wonder if some of these furloughs could have been avoided if the president took a larger pay cut. Anyway, I will say that RPI did a pretty good job at getting students off campus. Students had to be off campus by March 20th unless granted an exception. However, before spring break, students were only suggested to pack heavily, and halfway through spring break it was announced that campus was to be closed and classes moved online. All dorms had to be vacated by the 20th, meaning that many students had to travel back to campus in the midst of a pandemic to quickly move out of dorms. I personally went through two different airports to come back and move everything out. Additionally, RPI is not refunding us anything for tuition, even though class classes are now online, they claim that the high quality RPI education you're getting is still as high of a quality as it would be in person, thus they're not refunding tuition. They're also not refunding us the full 45% or so of housing and meal costs that went unused. Instead, they are refunding based on the amount of financial aid a student has. Personally, I don't agree with these actions. I feel like we should have gotten a full 45% or so refund, but uh, you may agree with what the RPI admin did and teach their own. Like, it's valid if you agree with that. <sighs> Jeez, that took a while. I did a lot of research for that section, but I bet you can guess that because of the school's administration, there is no way in hell that I can tell someone to go to RPI and sleep soundly at night. Until the administration is changed at this school, please do not attend it and give them any of your family's hard-earned money.
Next, I'm going to briefly talk about the cost of attendance to RPI, which on my survey was rated 4.3 out of 10 in terms of like, was it worth it or not? So personally, unless you have a lot of transfer credits like I talked about earlier and or you receive a lot of financial aid, RPI's cost of attendance are just way too high. For the upcoming school year, tuition is $55,600. Various fees are about $1,400, room and board is almost $16,000, and books and supplies are almost $3,000. This brings the total cost of a year at RPI to over $75,000, meaning that four years at RPI is over $300,000 without financial aid. Expenses at RPI also get more expensive every year. A helpful tip for any college freshman is to never buy your textbooks and supplies from your college's bookstore, okay? this They may seem convenient, but the price markup that they have is usually astounding. Please, please, please only buy your textbooks from other students or sites like Amazon where you can get them for a more reasonable price. This will save you so much money and you can resell your books once you are done with them. All things considered, there's no way that I can say that the cost of attending RPI are worth it. The only way I would say it would be worth it is if you're getting lots and lots of financial aid and scholarships that covers at least half of the costs to attend. Other than that, I say spend your money elsewhere. Now on to an arguably less serious topic, Troy, New York and the surrounding location. On my student survey, students rated Troy and the surrounding area 5.6 out of 10. RPI is located in Troy, New York, which is three hours north of New York City, and it's a short drive away from New York's capital, Albany. Troy is definitely not known for being safe. It's only safer than 10% of all US cities and it has a crime rate of 36.8 per 1,000 residents. RPI students often get safety alerts about robberies, suspicious people, and sometimes shootings in the area. However, I will note that crime rates have been falling in recent years and that campus is overall much safer than much of the surrounding area. Troy is, in my opinion, super boring though. Like if you don't have a car on campus, which freshmen are not allowed to have cars on campus, then you won't really be able to get anywhere fun without using a service like Uber or Lyft. The list of things to do in and around Troy is also pretty short, but it does include interesting activities like the farmers markets and exploring downtown Troy, which is becoming more safer and more updated. There are some movie theaters and restaurants around, and there is the odd novelty like indoor trampolining or rock climbing, and sometimes cool concerts come to Albany, like once I went to a Panic at the Disco concert in Albany, but overall the area is just like so boring and I oftentimes found myself at home just like with nowhere to go and nothing to do. Also public transport like bus lines in Troy are decent and being an RPI student does get you free access to some bus lines but it's unlikely that they're going to be able to take you anywhere fun in a reasonable amount of time. RPI's campus is just like super beautiful though especially in the summer and the fall. There's lots of greenery, plants, and blue skies in the spring and the summer and trees just turn these beautiful shades of like orange and red in the fall. And even when campus is covered in snow in the winter, it can also be pretty beautiful. However, because most students are not on campus in the summer, the best times and the best weather can't be enjoyed. Instead, I would estimate that about 60 to 70% of the school year just has rain, snow, clouds, and wind. And sometimes campus is so windy that I've actually almost fallen over several times. And sometimes you will go literally weeks with just cloud cover and you will not see the sun. It also gets pretty cold and snowy in the winters. Temperatures, have, let's see, in the last few years, they can get as low as like negative 10 degrees, but they usually fall between 10 and 30 degrees in the winter. And I come from Texas originally, hey y'all. Um, but I adapted to the weather and the temperature is fine, so I think other students can do that as well. Based on the location and area alone, would I recommend RPI to a prospective student? My answer is probably not. It's pretty and all, but the area is incredibly boring and can be pretty unsafe. If you're fine with those things, then I would be more likely to recommend the school. And now I'll be reading a few comments from my student survey. These first comments are from a mechanical engineering major. So regarding their undergrad experience overall, this person said, I was part of a varsity team and was able to insert myself in the social activities that I wanted to experience during college. As a female, I felt the advantages and consequences of the RPI ratio. 
I hated the administration alongside most students, even though I wasn't directly involved with student government or union-affiliated organizations. I found it a bit embarrassing to be associated with RPI while the administration was being exploited publicly. I love the people I met, students, and most professors, and I am grateful for that. When asked if I recommend RPI to prospective students, I say yes if social life isn't important to you, and that is true for very few people. Regarding their academic experience, they said, I got a job extremely easily and went into my senior year with two offers already. I did work extremely hard in school while balancing athletics and social life, yes, partying every weekend. The academics are great if you take advantage of them. You get out as much as you put in, as is true for anywhere, but at RPI you have the opportunity to put in more than the average university. Regarding their sports, club, and extracurricular experience, this person said, Varsity track and field, we had our team issues, coaches drama, which is typical, but being part of RPI athletics was extremely beneficial as a young freshman being guided by upperclassmen and the athletic staff. Also part of women's club soccer, which was a lot of fun for me, but it was more a side hobby since my true commitment was varsity track. Research took up some of my time as well, which was huge in helping me get my first internship experience after sophomore year. Regarding their college living experience, this person said, Overpriced. I wasn't in Greek life, but if money is tough for your family, my advice is to join Greek life just so you can live in Greek housing as a sophomore and save money. Get your fucking ass off campus ASAP. Regarding RPI's cost of attendance, this person said, no, I had almost a full ride, so cost wasn't much of a factor in my decision. If you don't receive any financial aid, do not attend this school. And if you did, but you're still paying 40000 a year, still don't go. Regarding the RPI administration, this person said, I wasn't personally affected per se, but as a student, the admin represents us and their actions were embarrassing. And regarding Troy, New York, this person said, I'm from Los Angeles, Troy is far from that. And yeah, I would imagine Troy is like the exact opposite of LA. <laughs> okay, now these next comments are from a nuclear engineering major. Regarding their undergraduate experience, this person said, It was honestly hell. I had sexism from professors and classmates. I felt like I was drowning constantly. The academic experience was so difficult that I struggled with severe anxiety and depression. I was planning to live on campus my junior year, as I was told I would be able to, but they admitted so many freshmen I wasn't able to get housing and had to sign a lease last minute. The counseling center told me to transfer when I was struggling. Regarding their academic experience, this person said, Academics were brutal. Many of my professors never showed up to office hours. I had trouble getting tutoring for anything other than the basic classes. The emphasis on memorization and regurgitation was disappointing. Everything is test-based, which for me doesn't show my true knowledge because I'm a bad test taker. Regarding their extracurricular experience, this person said, Extracurricular activities were the only thing that kept me sane. There are many clubs and I met my best friends participating in them. Regarding their college living experience, this person said, Dorms were overpriced, food was awful and expensive, and I wasn't even able to live on campus if I wanted to as an upperclassman. This person was involved in Greek life, and regarding Greek life, they said, It was great until RPI ruined it with their oversight. Greek life was under a threat from the administration, and the Greek dean hated my sorority in particular. Regarding their experience with other students, this person said, Overall, my experience with fellow students was positive. Unfortunately though, I definitely experienced sexism, especially in group projects, and when I spoke up, nothing was done, and I was told to deal with it by the professors. Unfortunately, sexism among the international students seemed a lot more than among other students. Regarding cost of attendance, this person said, It's way too much money for the education you get, and it's going downhill as well. Regarding the administration, this person said, the administration has made so many missteps, it's insane. The arts program, even though I didn't have to participate, made it so that many of my major specific electives weren't available because of professors having to teach once a year classes every semester. They cracked down on alcohol and Greek life, which was insane. I felt safer at parties at Greek life than at random apartments. 
Now with the pandemic situation, I am unable to use many of the services I paid for and I'm getting no refund since I moved off campus. I literally get no closure and my name is just going to be read on a stream after I spent $250,000 to come here. And they're referring to virtual graduation. Regarding Troy, this person said, Troy is not the safest in some areas, but it is nice that everything is close. It is good to have a car though, as the public transportation isn't the most convenient. And then this person also said, please be honest with students about RPI. I cannot recommend that anyone come here. It isn't worth the money and the administration does not care about student success at all. And finally, here are some more comments from an architecture major. Regarding their college living experience, this person said, Living in Bar H my freshman year really helped this ranking as I was surrounded by the amazing staff that runs Bar H. Regarding their experience with other students, this person said, It's 80-20 for me as the majority of the people I have met are some of the nicest people here, friends that will help me out when I'm stressed with finals. But I also have encountered people that take competitiveness to a different level, as well as people who demonstrated actions that weren't pure. Regarding RPI's cost of attendance, this person said, It's unnecessarily high, especially the Arch Summer set up forcing students to live on campus that most likely already are paying for off-campus housing. Regarding the administration, this person said, The administration frankly doesn't give a damn about students. My main issues personally are surrounded by the Title IX setup they have in place. Without going into too many details, they act as though they value the victim, but in the end, it is always the perpetrator's future that they are concerned about. Endless appeals that eventually can lead to the assailant being removed from school for only a year after which they are allowed to return. And finally, regarding Troy, this person said, It's not really safe. I've been followed by individuals in the past, and a student neighbor was robbed earlier this semester. So, in conclusion, you've seen the title of this video, you've heard what I and other students have said, and you should totally come up with your own conclusions and do your own research, but personally, I cannot in good conscience recommend that anyone attends RPI. The administration does not care about students or their opinions. The costs for attending RPI are unnecessarily high and climbing. Physical and mental health facilities are somewhat lacking. Summer Arch is a bad program that future students will be forced to do. If you just, if you really want to go to RPI, I recommend going to a community college for two years first, then transferring in as a junior. It will save you tons of money and stress, though another good option if you really want to go to RPI is to come in with lots of financial aid and transfer credits. Otherwise, I do not think attending RPI for your undergraduate studies is worth it at all. Oh, I doubt anyone made it through this entire video and came to the end, but if you did, thank you very much for watching. I wish you all the best on your college journey, and I hope that you are happy wherever you end up, and I hope you're happy with whatever you end up doing. Thanks again, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye! Hey everyone! If you like my videos a decent enough amount and want to see more, don't forget to subscribe, and maybe watch another one since you're here. You can also come bother me on other platforms like Twitter or Discord if you've got nothing else to do. See you next time!